The coastline at Seaford is more exposed to large waves driven by the prevailing southwesterly winds than any other frontage along the Sussex coast. Up to approximately a hundred years ago, Seaford was protected by a stable shingle beach, similar to that now existing at tide mills immediately to the west. Late last century, however, new structures such as the New Haven Harbour Arm interrupted the natural alongshore eastward drift of shingle along the Sussex coast, causing the beach levels at Seaford to decline. To prevent flooding from the sea, a sea wall was built. Unfortunately, the inadequate design of this wall caused the beach levels to decline even more rapidly. Waves breaking against the wall and reflecting from it over the years have scooped out the shingle beach and worn away the underlying chalk. During storms, the tremendous forces released by waves breaking on the wall abrade away and break up the concrete that forms the structure of the wall. The thick steel piles used to protect the toe of the wall are bent and distorted. Beach levels are now so low that waves six meters high can arrive at the seawall before breaking. The existing wall was never intended to resist the forces from these large waves. In November 1985, the sea broke through the piling, and a hole the size of three double-decker buses was discovered underneath the wall at this point. Fortunately, the sea remained calm during the week after the breakthrough, and the hole was quickly repaired by pumping in over 500 tons of concrete. On taking over responsibility for the defences at Seaford, Southern Water carried out a comprehensive study of the problem and used hydronics research to model various alternative schemes to solve it. From these studies, the most suitable and economic solution, estimated to cost 12.5 million pounds, was determined. This would comprise a restored beach requiring the importation of 3 million tons of shingle, a terminal groin to prevent the loss of this shingle to the east, rock protection to support the most exposed length of the existing wall, and a future yearly recycling program to maintain the beach. Harbour and General were awarded the first contract in June 1986. This was for the construction of the terminal groin at Splash Point. The new groin was constructed from sheet piling and concrete and incorporates an existing sewer full within it. 16 meter long steel piles were placed on either side of the existing outfall. Each pile was interlocked with the previous one, carefully positioned and held vertical in a temporary frame. The piles then had to be driven into the firm chalk underlying the beach. A newly developed hydraulic hammer was used for the driving. This hammer was many times quieter than a conventional diesel hammer and throughout the summer gave little or no annoyance to the nearby residents of Seaford. When a nine-meter-long wall of piling was complete on each side, all the shingle and soft material inside the piling was removed to form a firm chalk foundation for the concrete. At the landward end of the groin, this could be carried out by a hydraulic excavator working at low tide. When the excavation was complete, a closed box was formed by placing more piling at the seaward end. The box was then filled with concrete. The first stage of concreting was carried out by pumping. The lorry-mounted concrete pump was able to drive down and stand on the previously concreted parts of the groin. In this stage, the concrete had to be placed underwater up to six meters deep by means of the delivery hose from the pump. The concrete was delivered by trucks from a nearby batching plant in New Haven. As the concrete was placed and built upwards from the chalk bottom inside the piling box, it displaced the water above, which drained out to sea through the piling. During the whole operation, the delivery pipe had to be kept submerged in the concrete, otherwise cement would have been lost with the displaced water, weakening the concrete. Above the water line, the concrete was tipped directly from the mixer trucks. Over a thousand tons of concrete were sometimes placed in one day. Ground granulated blast furnace slag was used as a partial cement replacement to reduce cracking in the large mass of unreinforced concrete. Vibrators were used to move and compact the concrete, which was poured to just below the final finished surface and roughly leveled. The cycle for pile driving, 
excavation and concreting for the next nine meter box could then start again. On completion of all the boxes that formed the new groin profile, a continuous mat of reinforcement was laid on top of the groin and a 300 millimeter thick slab of concrete was poured to form a durable finished surface to resist the action of the sea. The groin was completed at a cost within the tender price of 620,000 pounds in a period of 20 weeks. This was two weeks ahead of program and in good time before the winter storms and resultant rough seas.